We are Jack and Will from Fallow, and uh, we're going to be answering some of your uh, most common questions that as found on Google. Uh, it's one of those things that's changed slightly recently. So like our chefs work, we try and keep them at 50 hours a week, three days on, three doubles, and then half a day. Um, but that means that they've got like, you know, a really good work-life balance. When they're here, it, yeah, it's full on, it's intense, it's high, high energy and fast pace, but then they still get their time to have a personal life, to go out to restaurants, see their friends. But I think the industry's changing with regard to hours. Like from when, even from when we started, you know, typically it was, it was a lot more hours. Um, and then if you go back even further, it was like considerably more hours. So um, it's going the right way. Because at the end of the day, you can't learn if you're absolutely knackered. Uh, so you need to have a good balance. Well, I'm not the best person to ask that, am I really? <laughs> well, you know when you uh, cook when you're at home, right? And you spend all day all day long cooking a roast dinner, and then by the by the time you come to serve it, you actually don't really want to eat it. Do you know what I mean? It's like if you're actually there all day tasting all the food, um, then it completely changes the way that you you don't want to sit down and eat a massive burger at the end of the night. Do you know what I mean? There's some things you have to be really careful of as a chef, like. Um, it's really bad for your teeth because you're literally tasting all day long. Staying on your feet all day long, like we probably walk about, I have no idea, but you're on your feet from eight, no, seven o'clock in the morning till, uh, till half twelve at night. So it's, it definitely helps keep the, uh, keeps the calories off. Generally speaking, use a whetstone. So with um, a 3,000 uh, grade on one side and then a 6,000 on the other. Realistically do that like once once every two weeks and then keep it honed with a nice um, ceramic steel for the rest of the time and then once every six months I send it off to a shopping called Catawba just to retouch it up and just to align it because obviously you know we're doing a lot of covers the knives take a bit of a battering so we just use the you know these guys are awesome they do it all by hand um, to keep the knives super, super sharp. It's one less thing for us to worry about on a day-to-day -day basis. You can get all different types of steels. Um, you know, like, you know, different knives require different steels. You've got Japanese knives, which is kind of like, you know, much uh, harder steel. You've got Western style knives, which is you know, a bit softer. So I'm just dragging it across the steel from heel to toe, at approximately a 45 degree angle. Now you see a lot of people just going for it, but you know, all you really need is to hold your steel nice straight You've got a slight point on the end, stop it sliding around. And you just, all you need to do is just draw it in that straight angle. That way you're getting the same angle from top to bottom. You know, five or six strokes on each side should keep it as long as you're doing it regularly enough. Yeah, I think, I think there, was a, there was a rumor that Heston used to smash a pot noodle back in the day. I, I mean, personally, I, I love eating out. Um, so I usually go out, out for, like, for inspiration, but I go out pretty much every day off I have. Yeah, it's, it, it's the simplicity. You know, it's not necessarily crap, but, you know, whenever I'm off, the, the last thing I'm gonna do is to wake up and start making, you know, a shakshuka and flatbreads and all this sort of stuff. But I am gonna make a beautiful scrambled egg on toast. Now, chefs love like, I don't know, baked beans on toast and jacket potatoes, you know, things which can be really delicious, but they're just very simple. No just washing up, all, one pan wonders. Cooking all day, you know what I mean? Like, you, don't, you don't wanna then go spend three hours cooking dinner on your day off as well, you know? As much about designing the dishes, but it's also about designing the flow of the kitchen, you know, and that's kind of what you do the more senior you are. You know, it's not like, oh, here's a dish, okay, you make that dish. It's, it all fits into, like, you know, how the kitchen runs. You know, everyone knows has their relevant roles, and it's up to whoever's on the path to make sure they're coming together at the same time. But some elements will be pre-cooked, some elements will be cooked to order, depending on what it is, so they're able to all come up to the path at the same time. We've got small saucepan, medium saucepan, large saucepan, which does larger cooking, reducing of stocks. Um, we've got massive stock pots downstairs, which do all the, of the bigger jobs. And then we've got like really nice quality um, saute pans up here, which, which does a bit more of the finer preparations, but they're quite expensive. So we, we sort of reserve those for the, for the meats and the fish. And everything else is cooked on the charcoal grill. The caramelization of the meat um, at a high temperature over the flames and the fat dripping down onto the coals basically flavours the meat um, and makes it taste like it just releases so many more different aromas in the meat. 
Uh, probably the price, to be honest. You know, they, they are good. They do, like, you know, when you buy something quality, you're buying something to last, you know? Like, we can get a pan for 20, 30 quid. Um, it will work just the same at the beginning, but then, obviously, they stand the test of time. It's like a good pair of shoes, you know? You buy a shit pair of shoes, they'll be okay, but they'll die. They'll be gone in six months, but you buy a nice, good pair, they could last you a lifetime. Personally, I actually love olives, like olive oil, but it's obviously it's coming from Greece and Spain. So we use, um, we just use extra virgin cold pressed English rapeseed oil. And that's what we use for basically all of our dressings. And then for, for all the other oil, it's another form of rapeseed oil that comes from the UK. Different restaurants have different styles. Our, our food is very prep heavy, um, you know, with the sustainable angles and trying to get the most out of every element of the vegetable and meat. Uh, whole animal stuff, you know, keeping all the different tops and roots of all the vegetables, it requires a lot of space. If we had a smaller restaurant, then we'd have to adapt to what, how we cook to that site. But as I said, you know, we're very lucky to have that basement and it, and it works very well for the sort of the style of restaurant that we have developed over the last uh, eight months. You wouldn't want a couple of vegetarians coming in and seeing you down, breaking down a deer in the middle of the kitchen. It's sort of almost like an acknowledgement of where the gastronomic practice comes from. Job titles is actually constructed from the uh, Nap Napoleonic army, so it's like um, everything from commie chef doing all the, the really basic jobs, all the way up to um, all the way up to head chef. You know, it's that hierarchy. It's something that we don't stick to really incredibly precisely, like you would have done back in the day. And we try and change it up a lot, be a little bit more progressive. But um, at the same time, it's good to have the different different uh, positions in the kitchen and also we say French phrases but it's it's more of a it's just a cultural thing to do with fine dining it's all all comes from France to be quite honest the fine dining tradition and restaurant tradition so we owe a lot to them so I mean there's you know there's no right or wrong way I mean different people have done different approaches uh, you know but the most common way is probably to enter into um, you know you can do a college course an apprenticeship style course, you know, where you do a few days in a workplace and then have your modules and, and sort of coursework to fill out. Um, or you can do a fully college based course, you know, which would last two years and then when you leave that you look for a job in the kitchen. You, know, you don't need anything to be a chef, um, you don't technically have to have anything. Chefs tend to work in a lot of restaurants so you can learn lots of different skills. Because every restaurant you go to you'll do something different. And then once you once you gather enough experience in all the different places, um, then you would then have your own style of cooking or you'd look to open your own restaurant, you know, which is like what, what Will and I did, you know, we worked in kitchens around the place, got a good base knowledge, then we worked for Heston. But yeah, I, I think there's no, there's no shortcut to it really, you know, you've got to put the hours in, you've got to do, get, gain the experience and once you've done that, um, even if you're a head chef, even if, you had a, even if you're a chef and you had 10 restaurants, you know, you could still be, you'd still be learning every day. And you're just applying your base knowledge to whatever it may be that you find, you know, or, or ingredient or dish that you want to use.